Hey everyone, Ryan here and welcome back to our prosthodontic series. In this video we're going to talk about dental impression materials. And I'm really excited about this video because there are so many boards questions that come from this topic. And I know it's been a topic that's been requested for quite some time, so I'm really excited to cover this information. So first we have to talk about tissue management for taking proper impressions. And tissue management has two components, fluid control, which includes both saliva and the gingival curricular fluid, and tissue displacement. So the idea of both of these components is to provide clear access to the crown prep for taking a clean, accurate impression. So for fluid control, we typically employ local measures of isolation, like cotton rolls and suction, Antisialagogues, which are a type of medication, aren't typically employed for this purpose. Tissue displacement, we can use a number of options. Retraction cords are probably the most prevalent. We place them right under where the margin of the prep was prepared and into the periodontal apparatus, and it's used to stretch the circumferential periodontal fibers out of the way in order for us to get a clean, accurate, uh, impression. So we can also impregnate those cords with certain uh, medicaments, aluminum chloride, iron sulfate, or even epinephrine. These are all commonly employed in practice. And so this is, if we have a cord placed with something that's going to be preventing bleeding, of which all of these things do, they're promoting hemostasis, in other words, blood is another fluid that can get in our way and can mess up an otherwise perfect impression. So these things are often used and cords are often soaked in these medicaments in order to prevent bleeding. Electrosurgery can also be used, but it's contraindicated with certain patients. They have implanted pacemakers or insulin pumps and the electrode must not contact the tooth. All right, so let's dive into impression materials. This is a helpful flowchart, I think, for laying out the different categories of impressions. The main two are the aqueous hydrocolloids, and these are all the water-based impression materials, where you mix a powder with water, and the non-aqueous elastomers. And these elastomeric impression materials are not water-based, and you do not mix a powder with water. So let's talk about this first category first. So the reversible hydrocolloid, otherwise known as agar. So agar was the first successful elastic impression material used in dentistry. And it's unique in that it can change between two phases, a sole phase, Think of sol as being short for solution and a gel phase just by changing the temperature. So it's softened by heating and hardened by cooling back and forth. So it can be reused several times in this manner simply by changing the temperature, which explains why it's called reversible. It is a highly accurate material but it requires a complex procedure with multiple water baths of different temperatures so that we can take advantage of this phase change. So it's not used routinely in practice, although it is very accurate. So this word hydrocolloid is pretty interesting. Colloid refers to particles of one substance that are evenly dispersed throughout another substance. And if it's a hydrocolloid, that means one of those substances is water. So a very basic definition would be a mixture within water. And that's exactly what the two hydrocolloids are. First one we just talked about. The second one is the irreversible hydrocolloid, which is alginate. And so this is talking about how once we set the material, it can't be changed back into a different phase. So alginate is commonly, commonly used in dental practice. Its setting time is pretty quick in three to four minutes in the patient's mouth. 
and it should be poured with gypsum within 10 minutes. So you don't have a whole lot of time to take advantage of the impression and to pour it in uh, with dental plaster or dental stone. And we're going to talk all about gypsum materials in the next video. The primary ingredient of alginate is diatomaceous earth. The active ingredient is potassium alginate, where it gets its name. So for this material, you essentially mix a powder into water, and a lot of clinicians and assistants mix the water into the powder, myself included. But mixing the powder into the water is supposed to reduce the amount of bubbles formed and result in an overall cleaner mix. So how I remember this is P comes before W in the alphabet. And so the supposed recommended method is to pour the powder into a bowl of already prepared water. So just remember that P comes before W in the alphabet and you can remember this. Now the problem with alginate is it has the worst accuracy of the materials that we're talking about in this video. So while it's perfectly acceptable for diagnostic impressions, this is one material I absolutely would not recommend for taking final impressions for a crown or bridge where you need really, really good accuracy. Now here's some really critical information. You will certainly get bored questions on this. So we need to know what increases and decreases the setting time and the working time of impression materials, specifically the hydrocolloids like alginate. So setting time is how long it takes for the material to completely set, whereas working time is how long you have to use it before it starts to set. So they're pretty similar, and for the purposes of this, uh, this information here, we can interchange setting and working. So for decreasing the setting time, we could use hotter water or just use less of it. So we can also call using less water a decreased water to powder ratio. So these are things that we can do to influence the setting time. If we use hot water or just less of it or both, the material is going to set a whole lot faster than normal. And remember, usually three to four minutes is our typical setting time. If we wanted to increase the amount of setting time, say we're taking a longer than usual time to mix the material, or we just, usually you want to decrease the setting time for patient comfort. But if we wanted to increase, we would just do the opposite. So instead of using hotter water, we'd use colder water, and we could increase the water to powder ratio. So these things are incredibly important to memorize. I would just recommend memorizing one of these columns and then just remembering that the other one is exactly opposite to that. Okay, now we can talk about both the hydrocolloids. This slide was more pertinent for just the alginate component, but this one we can talk about both agar and alginate. And this is really good information to know for the board questions as well. Imbibition is the absorption of water. So I use these images of SpongeBob to very eloquently illustrate these phenomena. So imbibition is the absorption of water. So if you were to leave the alginate impression in a bowl of water, for instance, after it has set, it would absorb some of the water in the bowl and swell up and distort. Maybe not to this extent, but it would still be noticeable when you poured it. Likewise, if you were to leave the alginate impression out on the table, water would evaporate from it and it would shrink up and distort in that way. And that's cineresis, the exact opposite, the loss of water. So we have to be careful when we're talking about hydrocolloids to avoid imbibition and cineresis, both of which distort the impression and then distort the model that we pour from that impression, which causes problems. 
So the perfect balance is to spray a small amount of disinfectant onto the impression, wrap it in a moist paper towel, and then pour it in plaster or stone within that 10 minutes, not waiting too much longer than that. And again, this applies to both hydrocolloids, both agar and alginate. So a board's question could ask, which of the following impression materials are affected by imbibition or cineresis? And you'd look for either alginate or agar, reversible or irreversible hydrocolloid. Now there are two exceptions where later I will share with you that one of the elastomeric materials is affected by cineresis and one of them is affected by imbibition. So keep an eye out for that. All right, now we're into the elastomeric, the non-aqueous impression materials, the first of which is polysulfide rubber. So this impression material leaves a water byproduct. For some reason, this is really important to know for the board exam, so definitely memorize that. Polysulfide rubber is moisture tolerant. So we can also sort of call this hydrophobic, and hydrophobic from our chemistry days, it means that uh, something's water-fearing, or it's scared of water, and won't mix with it. And for this exact reason, this is why we have a water byproduct, because this impression material won't mix with the water that's present in the oral cavity, and will leave a water byproduct. It's also, because of this reason, very prone to cineresis, or drying out, the evaporation or loss of water to the environment. So that's one of the first exceptions I was talking about. This one, we have to pour within 30 to 45 minutes. Remember, alginate, we had 10 minutes. This one, we have a little bit longer because it's not quite as finicky as something like alginate with the imbibition and cineresis. All right, next we have condensation silicone. So condensation silicone was actually the first type of silicone impression material used in dentistry. This one leaves an alcohol byproduct. Again, these byproducts are really important to know for the board exam, so definitely memorize that. And this byproduct can cause the shrinkage of the impression when it's evaporated. So again, another form of distortion not the quite the same as cineresis, which is uh, talking about the loss of water. For condensation silicone, we're talking about alcohol. This one, a similar time frame, about 30 minutes to pour this one up. All right, the next impression material is polyether. Polyether has some really important facts that I can almost guarantee will occur and pop up on the board exam, as many of these things certainly will. This is probably one of the more important videos I've made on this channel, so definitely let's keep an eye out for these facts. Polyether impression material is very stable, but easily influenced by water and the humidity of the room that you're in. So this is complete opposite to the polysulfide rubber. In this one, we're talking about a material that's hydrophilic. So hydrophilic means it's water loving. So it likes to mix with water, and so it can swell up and be affected even by the relative humidity in the room. And because of this, it's prone to imbibition or swelling up with water. Now, since it loves water, it can actually function quite well with a very um, wet oral cavity, but it is prone to imbibition and distortion in that way. Now, another thing is that it's also really hard to remove from the patient's mouth because it's so stiff. It's a very, very stiff material once it sets, and not only is it hard to get out of the patient's mouth, it sticks to their teeth, it's very easy to break teeth from the cast after the gypsum has set. So you're pull, you poured this material, you poured this impression with gypsum, it, it sets into a nice dental cast. 
you have to then remove this impression from that cast and it's very easy to break teeth off just because of how rigid and how stiff polyether is. Now, good news is you have an hour before you have to pour this one. So you have a little bit more time to work with if you're busy. Now, the last impression material I'm going to be talking about in this video is addition silicone, also known as PVS. PVS is awesome. It's a great material. It's very expensive, but it's the best material. Basically has the best of everything. It has no byproducts, no water, no alcohol, no byproducts at all. The PVS stands for polyvinyl siloxane, if you're curious. It provides the best fine detail, the best elastic recovery, and the best dimensional stability. Again, it basically offers the best of everything. You have a whole lot of time to pour it up, 60 plus minutes. You can even, honestly, you could even probably wait weeks to pour this up because of how stable it is, but it's recommended to do so in at least a couple days. The only negative besides it being expensive is that it's inhibited by the sulfur in latex gloves and the rubber dam. So the fact that it gets affected by latex gloves is clinically significant, and it's also a very, very common boards question. So definitely remember that one. So those are all of the impression materials we have talked about. We talked about the aqueous hydrocolloids, agar and alginate, and we talked about the four non-aqueous elastomers, polysulfide rubber, condensation silicone, polyether, and addition silicone, otherwise known as PVS. So thanks so much for watching everyone. Um, I'm really excited to announce that I recently launched my Patreon page. So if you're interested in supporting me there and unlocking extras like access to my video slides to take notes on, go check that out. The link will be in the description. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you all in the next video.